Good morning, New Life. It is good to see you guys here this morning. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Now, we're in a series called The Best of the Best. And so what we have done is before this COVID-19 happened here, uh, you guys selected a sermon that you wanted to rehear. And you wanted to hear again. And so we compiled these five sermons here, and we titled it The Best of the Best. Now, this sermon here... Uh, comes from the series Overcoming Your Obstacles. And so we, we're talking about that today. We're going to talk about having courage. And so we're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 17 here this morning. And as you turn your Bibles in there, I'm going to pray. Dear Grace and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Be with us, guide us, protect us, Lord Jesus. Help us to love you. Help us to serve you, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to have courage, Lord Jesus. And help us to learn the story of David and how he had courage, dear Heavenly Father, and may we also have the same type of courage, dear Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, and so just a little bit of background here is this is the story of David and Goliath. Okay, it's the uh, popular story, so hopefully you've heard of the story of David and Goliath. Now, David, he goes down to the battlefield. Uh, because his father told him to. And he goes down there and he sees Israel on one side over here. And he sees the Philistines on the other side of the valley over here. And the Philistines, what they do is they're sending out their champion. Their champion whose name is Goliath. And so he would come out and, and he would taunt the Israelites. Now a little bit about Goliath here is at the very smallest... Goliath is 9 feet 9 inches tall. Okay, so he is a big guy. And we learned that he has about 125 pounds of armor on him. And if you if we remember, when we went through the series, his spearhead weighs about 15 pounds, just the head of the spear. So Goliath is a huge man. In fact, he has weapons, all kinds of weapons on him. Both his hands are filled with weapons. Weapons are strapped on him. And so since his hands are full, he has a shield bearer go out in front of him. Okay, and so this is Goliath. And Goliath mocks God, and he mocks the Israelite army. Now David, he hears Goliath do this. He hears Goliath come out and mock him, and he can't believe what is happening. So David takes action, and he goes to the brook, he gathers five stones, and then he goes and kills Goliath. Now, David was approximately 17 years of age when he did this, when this took place. So the point of this is, God can use you no matter how old you are. Okay, you're never too young or too old to be used by God. We even see uh, John the Baptist, he's filled with the Holy Spirit when... Okay, when he's still in the womb, right? He leaps for joy when Mary walked in pregnant with Jesus there. And so God can use you, and the Holy Spirit can get a hold of you at any age. And so today we're going to talk about seven actions and seven principles that David had done to be useful to God. Right? And so we want to follow David's examples of these. And so the first one that we've talked about is that he was responsible. And so David here is responsible. Now people do not want to be responsible today. We don't want to have responsibilities today, do we? We want the money without the job, right? Okay, and so this is, is us. We don't want to have the responsibilities. Now God honors those who are responsible. So we need to be responsible. Now David... David had a job. David played a harp for Saul, and he tended his father's sheep at the same time. So here we read verse 15 with me, and it says this. But David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock at, Beth at Bethlehem. So here we see that David is responsible. Okay, He is a responsible person even at the, at, at the teenage years. David made sure that his responsibilities were taken care of when he went to Saul. He made sure that the flocks were taken care of. So he was a responsible person. We need to be 
responsible people as well. Second thing that David, that we notice about David, is that he was obedient. Okay, verses 17 and 18, it says this. Then Jesse said to David, his son, Take now for your brothers an epac of this roasted grain and these ten loaves of, of ten loaves, and run to the camp with your brothers. Bring also these ten cuts of cheese and to the commanders of their thousands. And look into the welfare of your brothers and bring back news of them. Okay, and so here he he was responsible and now he's obedient. He didn't talk back to his father. He didn't riot. He didn't throw a fit. He didn't rebel. He didn't roll his eyes at his father. He was obedient. In fact, if we keep reading, we see that he readied the supplies. He did everything his father said. And then first thing in the morning, he headed back and, and was obedient to his father. He was submissive to authority. Does that describe you? Are you submissive to authority? Because if you cannot be obedient then God cannot use you. Okay? If God uses those who submit to authority. So it is important that we become obedient people and we learn to obey and to submit, especially there, to God. The third thing that I want to talk about, David had courage. Now, courage is a quality to face dangerous and difficult situations without giving in to fear. Notice I didn't say you will never be fearful and that you'll never have fear about you. I didn't say that. I, what I said was is that courage is the quality to face dangerous and difficult situations without giving in to fear. All right, so how many of us have ever been afraid? Has anybody been afraid? Okay. We all have been afraid at some point in some time. Okay, and so how many of us did not do something because we were afraid or because we had fear. Okay, now I will tell you one of the things that I do not like at all. There's this ride where you're you're in a swing and you're you're hauled all the way back and you have to let that rope go and you just swing across. I will not go on that ride. I just don't like it, don't trust it, or anything of that nature, right? And so because of that fear, I will not go on the swing, right? And so here. Uh, courage is doing something without giving in to that fear. Verse 23, if you'll read that with me, it says this. As he was talking with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine from Gath named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistines. And he spoke these same words, and David heard them. So here, Goliath comes onto the field. He's there talking with his brothers, talking with the Israelite army, and all of a sudden, here comes Goliath. And Goliath comes, and he mocks God. He mocks the Israelite army. And David hears these words. Now, verse 24, 26. It says this. When all the men of Israel saw the man, they fled from him, and were greatly afraid. And so they saw Goliath coming out. And man, they are filled with fear. And they're not going to go fight because they are afraid. Verse 25. The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he is coming up to defy Israel. And it will be that the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Now, free in Israel, that means they're going to live tax-free. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys would love to live tax-free. I would love to live tax-free without paying any taxes. But this is one of the gifts that was given to the person who defeats uh, Goliath. Verse 26, Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine? And takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? David wants to know why the army is living, why the armies of the living God is hiding in a ditch. Why are they running and fleeing 
from the sound of this man. Okay, David doesn't understand this. He has no comprehension of why you are saved by the grace of God and you serve the living God. Why would you run and why would you hide? Okay, and he talks about this uncircumcised, godless Philistine who insults the true God. How can you let that happen? How can you let that keep going on? He doesn't understand why they were running, why they were hiding. That, my friends, is courage. Okay, everyone is hiding, and David cannot believe what he is seeing. Okay, he can't believe this. He can't believe that they are running and hiding and, and just fleeing from the situation. Read verses 31, 32. When the words which David spoke were heard, they were told them to Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail on the account of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Okay, and so if you want to do the spectacular for God, then we must have courage. If you want to do and be obedient to the will of God, then you're going to have to have courage. To stand up for what is right takes a lot of courage. There is not any obstacle that is too big for us to go over, overcome if God is on our side. We must have courage to face any obstacle that is in our way. Because we serve a great and big God. A mighty God. Okay, there is nothing that God cannot handle. Okay, and if you looked at this situation, I mean, my goodness. Here you have little David against big Goliath. That seemed like an impossibility. But we serve a big and mighty God. The Bible says that there is no weapon that formed against me which shall prosper. But do we believe this verse? Do we believe that there is no weapon in which to be formed against us which we prosper? I know we know this verse. And I know we quote this verse. But do we truly believe this verse? You see, we are to move forward with the things of God. No matter what obstacle and no matter what is put in our way, put in our path, we are to serve God. We cannot be worried about what people will say or do. Okay, and, and sometimes, sometimes the people we think that would be for us may actually be against us. Okay, but we're not to worry about people. Don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about their actions. Okay, we are to be obedient with God and to have this courage to do the will of God in our life. We're to do what God wants us to do and not be afraid because He is always with us. And that's what I love about that, is, is God promises that He will never leave us, never forsake us. He is always with, it, with us. And if God is for us, then who can be against us? Verse 26, if you'll read that with me. We'll read this again. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills his Philistine and takes away his reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? This needs to be our attitude. Okay, this attitude is who dares go against God? Okay, who is this who comes against God? This needs to be the attitude in which we have. God says we are to do this, and this is what is right, this is what is correct. Therefore, we are to proceed in that, we need to have that attitude. So let me ask you a question. Have you been saved by the grace of God? Are you a believer in Christ? Okay, has He shed His grace upon you? If so, we need to act like it. Okay, where is our courage? Are you filled with courage? Where is our boldness? Are you bold in sharing your faith? Are you, you bold with your faith? We need to be like David, who says, who is this who goes against the living God? I mean, how many of us 
are bold in our faith. I mean, here we have our own government talking about abortion. Okay? And, and how many of us are bold in our faith? What are we doing? What are we saying about abortion? What are we saying about the homosexual lifestyle? Our government says, hey, you are to deem it okay. It is good. It is right. Okay, but we know what the Word of God says. God says, no, it's not right. Okay, it goes against what God says. Are we bold? Are we standing up for what is right? Now here, if you were to take odds, the odds were against David. If, if you just look at the two side by side, here's David, here's Goliath. Okay, here's David, 17 years old. He is just a youth. Here's Goliath, who is a veteran warrior. Okay, here, here's David, no armor. Here's Goliath, filled with armor. Here's David, I don't know how tall he was, but just judging from uh, Jewish people, he was probably under six feet. Here's Goliath, nine feet, nine inches. Okay, and then so if we were taking odds, the odds would be against David. No one was rooting for David. Not even his brothers were rooting for David. Matter of fact, they were not encouraging him at all. They were discouraging him. Okay, and even Saul was not encouraging him. Here the Philistine army, they were encouraging Goliath. They're like, hey, you got this guy. They go for this. Do this. Get this done. So, no one was encouraging him. But yet, God was with David. And that was all he needed. He didn't need a cheerleading section. He didn't need people to encourage him or give him a, hey, that's a boy. He says, hey, if God is with me, man, that's all I need. I just need God on my side. That, my friends, is courage. Everybody was against him, yet he had the courage to stand up against Goliath. The fourth thing that David had is David overcame rejection. Read with me verses 28 to 33. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger burned against David. And he said to him, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those sheep in the wilderness? I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart. You have come down in order to see the battle. But David says, what have I done now? Was it not just a question? So his brother is against him. Okay, his brother's upset that he is there. His brother's against him. So here, uh, verse 30. Then he turned away from him. So he turned away from his brother. Hey, fine. You're not going to encourage me. I'm going to go elsewhere. Okay? And, and he said the same thing. And the people answered the same thing as before. So they were just like his brother. And when the words in which David spoke were heard, they were told them to Saul, and he sent for them. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail on the account of him. Your servant will go fight with this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, You were not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. Okay, and so rejection is going to come with the territory. He is rejected by everybody. Nobody was on David's side. He says, Guys, God's on our side. And if God's on our side, we don't need anybody else. But God is all we need. We need to have courage and believe that God is the one who's going to fight this battle. And so rejection is going to happen. And people are going to say to you, you're too young or you're too old or you're not qualified or you have no experience. Okay, so rejection is going to happen, especially when you are following the will of God. And you're trying to become obedient and to do His will and to serve Him in whatever fashion He desires of you. Rejection is going to happen. They're going to say, you don't have experience in this area. You're not qualified to do this. Now, we know that the Israelites are God's chosen people. Now, why are they God's chosen people? 
it because they were big and strong and mighty? It wasn't that way at all. This is what I have discovered about God. God likes to use people who are not qualified. You may not be qualified to lead the children's department. But yet, if you have that heart, you may be able to lead in that area. Okay, and so rejection is going to happen. People are going to say, you can't do that because of whatever reason. But the Israelites were God's chosen people not because they were big and strong, but because they were the opposite. They were little. They were weak. They had nothing. And God took them and says, I'm going to show my power and my might through you who are basically nothing. Rejection is a sign that God is, is not want, does not want you to fit in with the people around you. Okay, and so when we are doing God's will and everybody is, is for us and is with us, something's wrong. Something's not right. When we are doing God's will, rejection is going to happen. And a lot of times we are rejected by the people we think would be on our side, who would be for us, who would be with us. And yet they seem to be against us. God, I think, allows this to test us to see if we're going to be faithful. You know, I've had a lot of ministries and seen a lot of ministries fail because either rejection or an obstacle was placed in the way. And so uh, something didn't happen the way it was supposed to go in the eyes of the people. And so they dropped the ministry. The ministry stopped. Either because of rejection or it wasn't going the way they wanted it to go. We do not need to fear rejection. Let me just put you at ease. You're going to be rejected. Everybody's going to be rejected in some form or another. Okay, it is an expectation we should. You will be rejected in some form, some way in your life, especially if you're following the will of God in your life. Now, how many people have been rejected for standing for what was right? Okay, if you stand for what is right, you will face rejection. Rejection will come to you. Turn with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. Verses 10 and 11. Here we have Peter and John. Peter preaches the first sermon. 3,000 souls are saved. Peter and John are, are out and about. And, and they see this, this beggar. This, this lame man. And they heal him. And he gets up. And he starts jumping with joy. Praising God for what had happened. So they start preaching a second sermon. And as they were preaching, they get arrested. And they were told, never again are they to preach the name of Jesus. This is their response. Verses 10 and 11. Verse 10. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands before you in good health. He is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders, which became the chief cornerstone. Okay, and so here, uh, this is their response. Okay, they were told never to uh, preach in the name of Jesus again, but they don't cower down. They have courage. And they respond in a way that says, this is what is right. I don't care what you say, but we know that salvation comes from the Lord. And we're going to keep preaching this message. If we're going to get where God wants us to go, then we are going to have to get past rejection. Rejection is going to happen. We need courage and the ability to overcome rejection. So if you're going to go from point A to point B, if God's taking you from here, whatever here is, and taking you to here, we want to go in a straight line, right? We want to go quickly as possible. That's, that's me anyways. You know, if, if I'm going a, a direction, if I'm going somewhere, someplace, 
I want to get there as quickly as I can. I don't want to take the scenic route. Okay? I don't want to take this long journey, this two-hour journey to go 30 minutes away. Right? I want to get there as quickly as I can. And, but yet God doesn't seem to, to bring us from point A to point B in a quick manner. Okay? There are, instead, there are a lot of valleys and hills and going around things. Okay, it is a bumpy path and a hard path. And yet, we're going to go through the wilderness and we're going to have to face rejection and we're going to have to have courage. Now, in the wilderness, you're going to have to have this courage. Going through the wilderness is not always easy. It's not always fun. There are going to be obstacles in your way. We want it to be easy. But I'm just going to tell you, Ministry and following God's will is never easy. Things are going to happen. Things are going to show up. <clears throat> Obstacles are going to get in the way. But let me tell you something. God knows the obstacles are going to be there. God allowed the obstacles to be there. God knew that he was going to create Goliath for a certain purpose. He knew this battle was going to happen. He knew Israel was going to look and fall in fear when they saw Goliath. But he also knew that he raised up a young man to stand against that obstacle. Obstacles are going to happen. The question is, are you going to have the courage to overcome that obstacle? Are you going to be able to overcome rejection? To follow the plan of God in your life? What is more important to you? Is it more important to follow God's will? Or to follow what the world is doing? What everybody else is doing? Okay, what's more important in your life? Hopefully. We are going to have courage. We're going to take courage and we're going to say, God, if this is what you're desiring of my life, that's what I'm going to do. Whatever may come, whatever obstacle may be put in my path, that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow your will in my life. We need to have courage. It's important that we take courage in our life. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for people like David, Lord Jesus, who had courage to face the impossibility. But the reality is this, that nothing is impossible without you, Lord Jesus. There's nothing that you can't overcome. There's no situation that we can't overcome through you, Lord Jesus. Lord, give us this strength. Give us this courage. Give us this, this power, Lord God. It's already within us. If we're a believer today, Lord, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that raised us from the dead and now lives inside of us. Lord, help us to have the faith to dig into this God-raising power, Lord Jesus. Help us to do your will. Follow your ways, Lord God. Seek you with all of our hearts to Heavenly Father. There is no better way, no better path to take than one of being, uh, of following you and following your will and doing things for your glory, dear Heavenly Father. Be with us and protect us always, Lord Jesus. Give us the courage we need to face rejection because we as people, we don't like to be rejected, Lord God. But they're not rejecting us. They're rejecting you and help us to follow through and to keep going in your will, dear Lord Jesus. Give us the strength that we need. Help us to be bold in our faith, dear Lord God. We just love you and we praise you and we want to serve you always. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.